welcome to Marin Poets Live. I'm Neshama Franklin. I work at the Fairfax Library and I love poetry. So it is a special pleasure for me to share this opportunity to introduce you to poets from our county in the flesh, as it were, as they read and discuss their work. Monthly tapings will be broadcast on Marin TV and then become part of a special page on our website, along with biographies of the poets and links to our collection. This is a partnership with the Marin Poetry Center. A common thread will be discovering how living in Marin has influenced their poetry. Those of you who already love poetry will appreciate this direct transmission from the poet to the listener, you. Those who might think of poetry as esoteric or abstract will discover how it can sing when read aloud. For this program, we will feature Brenda Hillman. And here she is. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you. It's a delight to be here. Yes. So we always ask for a Marin poem first. I bet you have a bunch, but I, give us the one on the top of the list. I have many. And uh, I will start with a poem that has to do with uh, autumn in Marin. Uh, and it, it was written in Inverness, and it uh, refers to children in, in uh, West Marin. The letters learn to breathe twice. When the danger of fire has passed, the children, even while when wanting to text, form letters with pencils, tracing gray skin around the unsayable, while geese honk overhead, oh, 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 in their wedge of funny adults. The children try to be normal, though no one knows what normal is. In nearby gardens, the unwanted dandelion, Taraxicum officinale, a large squash prepares for harvest, its S-shaped stem with moisture bent. Children braid languages, and some are praised for confidence, but who praises the garden for all that breath? The cheerful, mild, constant anxiety of your childhood turned to writing, then meaning came with its invincible glare. The page had borders, but no limit. And you loved letters then, their breath allowed not to decide as it curved between skin bearer and the being said. Mm. Now, I love the four words about the nature of childhood, which is so complicated that people don't get what I mean, we were all children, yes. and we were all messes. Yes. But somehow it seems to be a golden time. But here you've, you've encapsulated the complexity of childhood. Vision fire time was? Yes, yeah. indeed. Well, it's, you know, it's, it seems as if childhood is that magical mix of, of anxiety and learning new skills, and then all of the complexity of to being in touch with your imagination and being yeah. in the world, and then on top of that, going to school. Right, and the paper without limits. And the paper without but limits. But what I was referring to was the vision fire. The vision, was this the actual come out vision of that? fire. Yeah. You know, because this this book is all you know really about fire of inner oh, and outer, of course, and outer and inner. Um, in every poem, I refer to some form of fire. Mm. And so this, uh, you know, when the danger of fire has passed, we have this, you know, this sort of scary time in yeah. September and, and uh, August, in August to October, really. Right. Yeah. And yet the joys of the bonfire, the yeah. warmth of the exactly. hearth. Boy, yeah. what a so. rich... Um, image oh, you've got you. going through there. Oh, Let's you. have another. Yeah. Um, well, I will, uh, I'll, I'll turn to uh, the, the next poem in the book, which is uh, Local Warming and Early Autumn Butterflies. And I was meditating on the brevity of the butterfly, the butterfly's existence being, you know, in, in a way like meaning. The immortals won't leave us stranded. They allow us to think of them. Another foggy morning, clear by noon, by noun. In town, small businesses close for good, from ged to unite, while over the low lichen flutter the veined white and California sister. 
The names go off on their own, and now the names are learning to read the names. Warm dawn, shelf of color, when my love calls out, we also flutter. I place my body between him and the dream. The great dead gather the new apples. Once we flew paper, now we read the green tablets with our fingers. Vanessa Atalanta, fire over sage. Names don't need us, down dilly down, the children are learning to write the names. Checker spot, dog face, dots and feelers. What will we do with the pain of the age? Please stop calling it history, mister. Some of these creatures live only one day. Check, check, dot, dot, dots and feelers. We lift our resentment from you, Senator, to glamour the invented page. I'm just having so much fun clinging to those internal surprising <laughs> rhymes that poke, poke through there. <laughs> you know, there was a town, it, it's something in the beginning, just so much fun there. Thank and you. then taking the butterfly to check, check, da, da. <laughs> it's just, there's a lot of play and sadness in the same breath so far. Well, it's, it's interesting because one of the themes of this book is, is how letter how meaning passes from the visible and you know natural non-human world into letters into language and back out again so in and out and in this poem obviously there there's reference to the markings on the butterfly which are very like like language you yes. know the dots and the o's and the checks and mm -hmm. and so on and so i like to see um, letters and language in in things in the outdoors as well yeah. as inside nature as well. Right. Yeah. Boy, can I see the teacher in you. <laughs> I mean, in the very best sense of trying to teach something impossible. I mean, mm. do you teach poet, how to write poetry or it's, what it, do you teach at St. Well, well, Mary's? At St. Mary's, I, well, I direct the creative writing uh, MFA program right now. And I teach um, I try to teach my graduate students and the undergraduate poets to, you know, pay attention to language as their main task. Oh. So whether it draws from their own imaginations or whether they're tapping into the great literature that they encounter, uh, to make those connections between their ineffable imaginative realms of their dream lives and their experience. And, and to connect it with the impossible things that we hope to say and yeah. you know, make great beauty. Right. Um, I think making, making satisfying objects of language is one of the best things to do with your life. Ah. Really, yes. poetry. Right. You know? we, that's one of the things that's so exciting mm. about this program is that everyone who comes yes. has experienced the rigor of bliss. And that Absolutely. doesn't happen very often in Absolutely. this world. But I, I love that you're, you know, how do you deal, how do you teach poetry? Mm -hmm. You're releasing all the imaginative mm -hmm. stuff. That's their own business. But it's kind of like you're giving them scales to do. Yes. The language is the, obviously what it hangs on. Yes. So yes. pay attention to that, you're telling them. That's great. Well, well many people say that, you know, they're, they're skeptical of teaching creative writing or yeah. teaching poetry because it's, it's supposed to be this innate, you know, mm -hmm. gift, and either you have it or you don't. I really disagree. I think that um, that we can shepherd our imaginations and uh, and make possible that uh, that power. It's very, you know, it's very connected with the unconscious, oh, yes. and it's very connected with what we what we know our language in ourselves to be. Right, and the very yeah. first word so. you use, pay attention, yeah. is really what it's all about. It, it truly is, and, yes. and learning to obviously to sharpen up what, you know, what is the best, uh, what's yeah. the best and wildest thing in ourselves. Yes. Um, You're looking for another poem, I, I like that I because am. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I spotted the fern, mm -hmm. and so another autumn poem that comes out of West Marin um, I, I was trying to uh, 
to think in this book about seasons and micro seasons. The title of the book, Seasonal Works with Letters on Fire. Mm -hmm. And it, it really was obvious to me that we have micro seasons in California, mm -hmm. not these four chunky seasons that are often classical. Patience swoons in the sword ferns. Deep in the earth, a grief had been heard. Right behind that, a local mystery. What do you mean by mystery, missus? The parallel series that sink in the mist. Tentacles of limestone, Jupiter drops through Pegasus, and huckleberries line up like eyes in the matinee. Deep in the earth, an unprecedented seed. Hearing leans from the words early, earth, hearth, all have ears in them. I can hardly bear it, yet I go out. What can't you bear? Which, by the way, also has an ear in it. The tender exactingness. Electrons swoon in the sword fern. Polystica munitum. And after the rain, sexy tips of celadon. Sorry breathe under the fronds. Womanly shadow, why don't you try? Camp, 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 camp. My love and I are tired and cannot fly. Okay then, it is noon in the orange you wish for. It is night in the wretched war. A gasp in all creation, a stem pushes up through its prime. Mm, and do we need that stem? I love the reference to my love and I. It's so, <laughs> it, it harkens back, you know, to ballads, to yeah. everything. And in this case, is it the, the love of your life right now, or is there a different love in that um, poem? Well, it's my love and I are tired and cannot fly. Is mm -hmm. I, I always hope that specific references in my poems will be specific and, mm -hmm. and let the reader call their own love into yes. it. And of course, this, this refers to, to Bob Hass, my, yes. my, my mate, uh, my husband. And, uh, and we are tired a lot. We're hardworking teachers. Yes. We have very active lives. But I, I also think that there's a dialogue in this poem between mm -hmm. that very tired part of the self that's conversing, um, you know, what can't you bear? And then there's an answering voice, mm -hmm. the tender exactingness, yes. um, which, you know, the metaphor is to the little fern that we have an example of here, um, which outside my window is always seems to be un uncurling, you know. Mm -hmm. The sword fern starts in the middle and then it uncurls in that yeah. sort of lizard tongue way. And, um, and so the tiredness, yeah, seems to sometimes be released by, mm -hmm. by, uh, the natural world. Oh, yes. And, yeah. and even without the text in front of me, those ears came so <laughs> clear very early on. So how much time do you spend in Inverness versus your urban life? Well, we, we try to get, I think if we didn't, we didn't have to commute so far when we're in Inverness, uh, we, would, we would spend more time there. But we, we try to get out there weekends and mm -hmm. other times in the summer more, more much mm -hmm. more often. And um, we, we feel part of both communities. Yes. Yeah, very much. Right. And it's such an interesting community for poets because it has a kind of privacy as well as intimacy about it. It has that kind of lost on the moor quality That's right. <laughs> a little bit. It does. And, the, and, and because the National Park is so huge, yeah. there are so many places to explore. Right. We do a lot of hiking oh, and, and we're outdoors a lot. So. Right. And th those hikes speak to you. You bring them back. And so much. There's the kernels, that little shoot. So much. Out. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. Another poem, um, please. Well, I, I would love to read a poem about equinox ritual. And this oh. has lovers in it as well. Uh, I tried to, to speak to many times of the year, and this is, this is near the spring equinox, equinox or equinox, and it is called Equinox Ritual with Ravens and Pines. So we said to the somewhat, be born, and the shadow kept arriving in segments. Cold currents pushed minerals up from the seafloor, up through coral and labels of Diet Coke, blame-shame bottles down there. 
It is so much work to appear. Unreadable zeros drop lamps as mustard feels, brassica rapa, gold without hinges, a vital echo of caring. On the census, just right, it exists. Blue Wednesday bells strike the air like forks on a thrift store plate, and the shadow moves off to the side. In the woods, loved ones tramp through the high grass. They wait in a circle for the fire to appear. They throw paper dreams and sins upon the pyre and kiss, stoking the first hesitant flame after touching a match to the bad news. Branches are thrust back across myths before the flame catches. Ravens lurch through double-knuckled pines and the oaks and the otherwise. A snake slithers over serpentine, then down to the first dark, where every cry has sighs. Mm, so that, that goes from up to down, it does. in and out. And I love the, the honoring of those wonderful Latin names that you always seem to insert in the middle of a poem, just like a salute to uh, the sciences <laughs> and you know, to their, their formal selves. That's Say, right. I know who you are. The, uh, yes, I, I, know your, I know your other name. But, yes. Um, well, I, I like that, that a lot of poets in Marin and, and in the Bay Area and in California use, uh, use references, you know, can name their wildflowers, mm -hmm. can name their plants. But just as an homage to the texture of language, I like to use the Latinate names because, first of all, they're often ignored. Mm -hmm. And we know Brassica rapa, it's, you know, it's an imported species. But it sounds so beautiful, brassica rapa, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> as the mustard fields that we see mm -hmm. out in Marin. Um, and the other backstory of this is that um, our friend Susie Schlesinger, who has, who has a, um, who has a ranch, a farm, um, has an, an annual burn, and she oh. she piles up many leavings, and um, so she she invites friends to come mm -hmm. and. And we celebrate in this sort of pagan ritualistic way, and we kiss, and we try to throw our our wishes and our bad wishes and our good mm -hmm. wishes into the fire. And Very ancient. It is ancient, yeah, and it's it's um, primal, I think. That's really to beautiful. love the fire. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. And I'm being warmed in this time. The seasonal the change is so obvious. The cut in the air right oh. now. And so it feels very fresh. It, it does. And um, it feels like that moment of turning. And I, mm -hmm. I love those moments of turning. Um, I thought I'd read one that, um, that has less uh, to do with the local and maybe one to do with a slightly political Good. Um, theme. And if that's, if that's OK. Um, totally. I, I, Fully. <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of, I've, I've done a lot of activism. Mm -hmm. that has to do with um, with um, objecting to the wars, the current wars, and with um, great concern for environmental policy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so this is a poem that combines those things. It's a, it is a, a poem that admonishes people to moan at the gas pump, gas pump when they pump their gas, thinking about their, where their gas comes from. So I wanted to read this for your viewers. Um, it's called Moaning Action at the Gas Pump, and it's a prose poem, so it's in a block of prose. Soon it will be necessary to start a behavior of moaning outdoors when pumping gas. That capital S is a sort of gas nozzle, pulling up beginning a low moaning action, pulling a deep coral moan with cracks up through the body, the crude through the cracks of sea and earth, pulling neurotransmitters glutamate, acetylcholine, and others across chasms in the nervous system into the larynx until the sound acts by itself. So we shred the song to continue, meaning, mourning, moaning, mourning. I'm able to complete 34 moans by the time I've filled half the tank. 
City-states outlawed open whaling because it was not good for democracy, but you will merely be embarrassed even if you drive a hybrid. Please be embarrassed. Please. Inside the pump, you can hear a bird, a screech-covered pelican lugged out of the gulf with four million tons of the used booms in non-leakable plastic, 13 million tons of liquid in non-leakable plastic five miles up the road. Their five has a leak in it, by the way. The moan fans out as you put your head down on the hood of your car. Please moan, though the other drivers are staring. Squeak, there are other animals inside the pump. The great manatee, you've seen it float like a rug that has something wrapped in it among the grasses that will not return. This moan be, won't be the same mammal, but it is a democracy with no false knowledge. The sounds push to the edge of a painting, globs of oil floating to shores of salt marshes. The broadcaster says globs look like peanut butter, wanting to sound lovable so we can begin to feel friendly about them. Ever since three wars ago, the moan meeting other moans, and you ask how to get over it. Is it like Gilgamesh and Enkidu, David and Absalom, like Isis and Osiris, like Ishmael and history? Is it like Hecuba and her kids, Cassandra who did not drive? Is it like Mary, like Antigone who could barely lift the body to bury it? Probably you don't, you don't, probably you don't have to get over it. Mm. That's so amazing. I like the exhortation at the beginning. It sounds like a laundry list of what to do. You know, it's very, very dry. You know, that's the tone of it. And then it gets into such rich stuff. And I will never pump the same. I really won't. And, and uh, there were two kinds of mourning in the moaning, moaning, mourning, mourning. Yeah, morning, it's just morning, great. Yeah. And this is what a digital archive is all about. Who would have thought of those little squeaky, sad mm. sounds, they now can hear them in your very own mm. voice. Mm. So absolutely beautiful. Thank you. And then you brought in the heavy ammunition mm. yeah. of every t tragedy mm. and how they mm. dealt with it. Mm, so, you. and it was like drum beats, boom, <laughs> boom. So a great piece. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank we you. have about five minutes, so I just want you to know, among your greatest hits, <laughs> this is what we have time for. Oh, well, I, I, think I'll st I, I think I may stick with this book. Maybe I'll read a, I'd like to read a short poem about libraries. Oh, yes. From one, <laughs> of, from, uh, one of the other books and then a final poem. Um, the, the book Pieces of Air and the Epic, this, this is from, you know, the tetralogy of books about the elements, earth, air, water, fire, and this is the air book. So this is called An Oddness, and it's about the odd thoughts we have in libraries. It's called uh, An Oddness, and, and it's uh, in a uh, 12-line poem. A scent rather quietly loves the library. Readers look up, a life of paper inside the great life. Scent of greenly ravished civilization, dream of inspiration freed. When a book is lifted from horizon's steel, that mystery object spreads an oddness, each call number a timeling of yellow math, its curve left over from epic. The mind had no periphery for meaning, the several Phoenician sailing sideways through vowels of the dead. Mm, so that's the, again, those fluid boundaries, those no boundaries, the book spread open. That's so great. It is. I, we should post that somewhere. It is a love. But, there, there are 12 love poems to uh -huh. libraries in that book. Oh, great. Um, I'll and go I, spelunking for them. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope they speak to your, your oh, librarian's heart. They definitely um, do. And uh, I, I wanted to close with a, a poem uh, that is kind of a love poem to uh, people who appreciate the arts. 
and uh, think about meaning and what the arts bring to their lives and poetry and its, its vast mysteries because I do think we turn to poetry not, not for the obvious kinds of experience but for the depths and the many la layers and levels.